hello. Uh, I think this is first Welcome to the TV box. Uh, wait, TDB box. And uh, as in previous years, most recently, this is going to be an open session and bring your grievances your desires, um, whatever complaints you might have, whatever comments you might have, bring them up. Uh, in previous years, I thought doing this would mean that we would, we would be finishing the session in five minutes, but it turned out that there's always something to discuss, and I'm hoping to be the same thing this year. Um, so here we are. Uh, does anyone want to bring up some topics? Uh, or is this going to be the where we go and have drinks? That's all. You had something to say. Who's your shield? Yes. We will discuss about what uh, you This mic? Can we use this one? Yeah. Is it on? Yes. Is this you? Any question? Ah, yes. Back over here. This you would that be ex uh, something? I'm just. Um, yeah. So currently, the state state of things is if you contribute to GCC, you can do that under a, under a, a DCO a, a developer certificate of origin. The same for GDPC. The same for Binutils, but not for GDB. For GDB, you still need a copyright assignment to the EFSF, and that can cause some issue for some people in some uh, in some condition. And I'm one, one of the people who might have an issue um, and for, for to whom that makes life much more complicated to accept changes from downstream computing, uh, like in, in, in the uh, downstream part of GDB uh, where I'm involved. Because basically, our goal for the downstream part is to be able to take everything we have and have that eventually upstream. But if I accept contribution from anyone, I do not own that contribution, so I cannot forward it to the FSF and assign it as if uh, as if it was mine. Um, workaround would be, may, I'm not even sure if that works if the contributor has an active copyright assignment to the FSF, um, because at the end of the day, I'm only an, allowed to send and submit patches that I do own the copyright of, and I would not own the copyright of whoever contributed. So I guess in the only way that would work now is if the contributors um, sign a copyright to me or like the company I work for, and they might not really be willing to do that, even if they know that the end goal is to forward to the FSF. In the meantime, the copyright is owned by some other entity they might or might not want to trust. And so that makes things a bit complicated. Right. Uh, thank you. There's a topic. Oh, I know. I just I could have introduced myself. So I'm Lancelot, and I work for some company that does have some support for GPU in in GDB. And my tag says AMD. Uh. Right. Um, so I'm already familiar with this topic. I've chatted with Lancelot before about this. Uh, might be because I've been working with him for a number of years. Um, and uh, so we're in the situation where you have GCC, Binutils, uh, I should say, GLFC and then GCC, and more recently, Binutils started accepting code contributions under the DCO, and GDB ha hasn't decided to accept those. Um, there's desire from some interested parties in supporting that, enabling that. Um, uh, there's, there, has, there have been discussions between the maintainers uh, about enabling this, but there has been no um, agreement reached, um, and 
Of course, it's a licensing detail matter, and copyright assignment matter. Um, uh, and uh, <laughs> so, and yeah. Right, that's that's an excellent point. Is uh, if it is a problem, then how come GCC and uh, these other projects manage to do it, and particularly Binutils, since we share code with Binutils? So, in in a way, if DCO assign or if code on the DCO already made it to Binutils and specific, specifically to code shared with GDB, that means that GDB is already shipping code under the DCO. You know, not directly inside the GDB directory, but in the libraries that come with it. So why not allow it on the GDB side? It's, uh, at this point, it's a matter of uh, getting the maintainers to agree that we uh, should s allow that. Um, but there's also the question, the, the question, the lingering question is uh, GDB, is currently owned by the FSF, the copyright design. The, the copyright owner of the code is the FSF. So what is FSF's stance in this? But then there's the other argument, like why GCC and GLC and Binutils do support. So what happened here? Uh, this is something that I would like to uh, learn more about, <coughs> talk with uh, GCC and Binutils maintainers, see what happened there. Uh, if they went through some kind of process, some discussions with FSF, uh, figure out the, the current position of the FSF on this. Um, we've, I've initiated some conversations with the FSF actually today, um, but no conclusion yet. Uh, one thing that I'd be curious about um, and would help this process is to understand how much of a hindrance this is in the, in the community. community. Um, how much, uh, who is out there that would like to contribute under the DCO and because there's no DCO, they went away and they can't contribute and can uh, go through the copyright assignment process. It would be very interesting to, to hear from those people or companies so that we, we would have more justification to talk with the FSF if necessary to say, look, this is really hindering the project. Uh, you need to uh, sort this out because the public position of the FSF today that I'm aware of is they put it on a blog post, on a, on a web a page on, on the FSF uh, site. I, I think I, I've read it probably a year ago. So. I'm not sure I'll be paraphrasing it correctly, but I think what I remember is that uh, they agree that a DCO is a good thing. They just don't agree that the current DCO used by most projects borrowed from the current Linux kernel is the right one. They would like to have a better written uh, DCO. Um, so it, uh, it might be that what's really necessary would be really better for the whole community and even beyond the GNU toolchain would be to um, somehow press harder on the FSF so that they would do the work necessary to come up with a better DCO. Uh, so some kind of pressure on them. Uh, that might mean just you know, deciding that GDB is also going to switch. You know? uh, it's... There is, and you know, I see Bradley <laughs> waving there. I, I'm sure he'll have comments. Yeah. Okay. What? Oh, you you can say the minimal thing you think might be interesting to say now and invite people. Yeah. So, um, so we can certainly talk this. I, I, Denver and I are running the licensing buff on on Monday, uh, so we can certainly talk about this more. Um, I. I have a lot of knowledge about the history of this. I was on the FSF's board of directors previously. Uh, I, was, I spent basically 10 years <laughs> trying to convince the FSF to stop, copyright, stop requiring 100% copyright assignment for GCC. Um, I'll be quite frank that in the end, it was the GCC steering committee just unilaterally decided that they weren't gonna do it anymore. 
Um, and eventually the plans that were already inside the FSF, which we'd been making back when I was affiliated, I'm no longer affiliated with the FSF, but back when I was, they, they just sort of trotted out that plan that had been floating around for a while. Um, so I basically agree with you that there's a certain amount of pressure uh, situation. Um, the FSF is right about the DCO not being ideal uh, as a mechanism, uh, but uh, it is, in my opinion, good enough. Uh, so it's really, a and I've had discussions with the FSF about what they would want, uh, since I've left affiliation with the FSF, about what they would want in a better DCO, and I don't think they have a very clear idea at the moment. Um, so I think that's why it's not a priority. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, uh, it was instigated by the steering committee in both the GCC right. and as far as I know in the GLibC case as well. So it would have to probably be for GDB. I, I would well. like, yeah, I'd like to know the story behind uh, Binance Hills as well. No, yeah, I, I actually don't know. I don't know about Binance Hills. Because I got very pissed off, but not because of the FSF, but because of all the some of the corporations that pay all the work. And it was it came out of the blue for them too. And that basically changed the legal framework for contributing to the, those projects. And I think it would be a good idea to actually at least take into account the major contributor before doing such a thing. Yeah. So at least for GCC, it indeed came out of the blue. At least for me. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, is and, anyone from the Benito side one, here? One important point. Jose is making that that is really important to remember is that I, for years I, I mean I've been involved with I, I used to to like have to negotiate with the GCC community when I worked at the FSF about complaints about copyright assignment. Uh, once upon a time I actually was the guy who signed them, uh, <laughs> long in my past. Um, but the uh, the thing Jose is raising is really important because if you switch to a DCO model, most everyone's employers are going to hold the copyright. And that is a danger that I'm very worried about because the, the huge benefit of assigning to the FSF, it means that a nonprofit organization that cares about the G GPL holds the copyright. So I think it's important when the communities start to switch to having a, the copyright being diverse, which I think is actually a good thing. It's healthy for a project, but it's not so healthy when everybody's employers hold all the copyright. Right. So as these kind of things change, and we could talk more about this in the licensing buff on Monday, it's important to negotiate with all your employers and say, well, uh, uh, yes, we're not gonna sign to the FSF anymore, but I wanna have my own copyrights as an individual, not just say what most of the, your employment agreements say, which is your employer holds copyright, right. uh, which is, is really, it's been very dangerous for Linux, uh, I, which I can get into uh, offline. Right. But the, 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 uh, we both can assign as we currently do or right. I we still do in full copyright assignment with the FSF. Right. And then it, all, it tends to go back to GCC is already doing it, GLFC is already doing it, Binutil is already doing it. And that whole argument, why hasn't it been a problem for those projects, that, that enough that made the FSF do something. But G GDB is like a small thing in the whole pie. really addressed as to how we're going to make sure that the copyrights are held uh, primarily by non-profit organizations and individuals, not for profit companies. Right. So I think at this point is a matter of the GDB maintainers. I'm not talking about me specifically. The whole group as a group, like I'm relie relieving myself from responsibility. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a matter of the GB maintainers deciding if they want to just press ahead anyhow and in, in that way, force the FSF to do something if they want to, or wait and go through some kind of discussion with the FSF and work with them to come up with something, which may take a long while. Uh, Can we express opinions? Of course. That, it's all opinions. There's no... Okay. I mean, if, if the other projects have not cared, like, like actually, GDP is a small ship in the whole thing, so and I prefer not to involve external entities that could make the process longer, so... Right. If you want to do it, I suggest we, we do it, and then if the FS, FSF wants to get it, they'll get it for the whole food chain. All right. There's no reason for us to do yeah. uh, Mike, where's, where's the mic? Just for, for Binutil, you should, should talk with, with Nick, which is there. 
uh, it's not here in the set on the room, but it's here in the cauldron. And I just find the email that say uh, we haven't said that the DC was no hallowed on be, on being utilized, but I'm I don't know what happened behind the scene. So just talk to to Nick. It will be yeah. the, the the most useful, I guess. I was hoping he'd be here, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, so one question now, uh, considering that the DCO right now is not ideal, uh, but is a good, I don't know, a good step forward possibly, is moving to DCO now a, uh, like an, an, uh, a dead end if, or after moving to DCO, it's possible later to move to another better agreement uh, or are we closing options by moving to DCO now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you should put that again in the place of the mouth. Okay, thank you. Say, um, I think uh, for GCC, the majority of contributions, uh, the significant majority of contributions are still uh, assigned to the FSF. I feel like allowing contributions under the DCO has, made, has led to an increase in uh, kind of one-off contributions from, from people not wanting to go through the deal with the, the full okay. assignment process. Do, do you, that's, that's good feedback. Do, do you have a sense or whether, on whether that's more individual contributions or corporates have also taken advantage of the DCO? Um, I think that's mostly individuals. individuals. I think we just be a bit careful about beating up on corporates too much, and I say this as a chief executive, the, um, that there are some benefits to a member of staff having the contribution done by their company in that they are then protected if they've got any legal concerns. There's also the recognition that when you're... And we don't... We, could we do, we've got contributor assignments, so it's not what we do anyway. But one of the issues that all open-source companies struggle with is visibility... And it's great giving your individual staff ownership, but ultimately I've got to pay those staff, I've got to sell my services, and anonymizing that it's my company that's done it actually causes me more, 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 more pain. So let's just be a bit recognition that actually corporates aren't just evil. No, I wasn't implying that. Yeah. They've, yeah. No, I wasn't, I wasn't implying that at all. Uh, and I, I don't expect that people are being paid by a corporate and then submitting patches under a personal name. That, that's, I don't think that's what's happening. Uh, but I've, we've, we've heard on the mailing list publicly uh, comments saying, suggesting, saying that they couldn't contribute unless there was a DCO because the company does not want to uh, go through the assignment process. So the company wanted to follow the DCO process. Um, so the branding aspect wasn't lost. It was really the company saying that unless we, we, we can follow the DCO process, we won't contribute, basically. Uh, and I would be curious to, if, if you, any of you guys uh, are affected by this or if this is something that affects you personally or your job, to speak to me so that I can have the stories and then communicate to the maintainers and to the FSF. I mean, you don't have to say them here. I mean, in private, you can talk to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, I suspect there would be a selection bias in that the people in this room are people who have a um, strong interest in GDB. Um, and you'll be missing the sort of drive by contributors who might have contributed had it not been so onerous who, you know, coming to this conference and coming to this talk and all of that. Probably everybody here has a cover assignment already, so they're not. Um, and so there's the, there's the case of the people who want to one-off contribution and they're like just put off by doing the copyright assignment because it's tedious, it takes long. Like, I am pathetic to that. But the, 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 the case that Lancelot brought, I think it's more compelling where, you know, there's not just a central project, it's a project that's been forked and we want, to, want contributions to go up the tree of forks or whatever. We want to be able to do that. If 
the only way to contribute is for people is to go through the central project. It's it, it does hinder the software right. development process. I think it, so that's com I think that's compelling, and it it's a real use yeah. case. We had patches, and we we don't know what to do with them. It's the end result is you, you just scare away those contributors because they are submitting a patch to a downstream, not to upstream, and you you say we will need a copyright assignment to, with the FSF. So it's hard to keep those people, if they're contributing directly to the upstream, it's going to be way harder to keep that patch and get that accepted in the downstream. We if we can really do it, like them contributing in their name to the real project. Well, that, I believe they do, but I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you considered uh, splitting the case of a large contribution from the case of a tiny few liner. Because for depending on your end goal with having copyright assignment, you might want to consider a scheme where large contributions would require copyright assignment, but small drive buys can use a DCO. That, and it may still reach your end right. goal. We, we already allow that, uh, really small changes. We don't require, if, even without the DCO process. Uh, forget all about that. Only thing we have is the assignment process. If it's a really small patch, we can put it in without copyright assignment already. So we already have that. But no planning. It, it accumulates, yes. So it, it's cumulative. So you, you can't like send a 10-line patch today and another one in 10 months. <laughs> 10 days too late. <laughs> can't just split it, no. <laughs> Could I switch away from this topic? What? Could I switch away from, so does, are we done with the yeah. CEO? Is, does anyone want to bring up anything else about this topic? I guess it took me half of the time and there is going to be a license involved anyway. So yeah, we should. All right. Okay, so uh, my question is, is there any will to actually take GDB, GDB support and GDB server out of the bin utils and make it a repository of its own? Because I can believe it. There was a time it was really one of the utilities of the binary, but since it got its own branch, you, its own releases, I think it makes sense for what? looking at the git log, doing a git bisect for pollution or anything. It, it needs to be something on. It's not object dump anymore, but I think there was a time that GDB was, you know, as a small as object dump, read of something very, very preliminary. preliminary. So it's, um, there is a reason why GDB and binutils ended up in the same repo. It's because- There is a dependency, I understand that. Code share. Uh, yes. If, if we like detach from binutils, it would mean, would that, are you implying that we would no longer use BFT? And no, that's, that's not my, maybe we can use submodule in it. So, okay, I'm, I don't even want to depend on technology like Git or whatever, but there are many projects like QEMU, they depend on some other projects. They don't go necessarily in the same repository as right. that. Because when I try to find something in the repository, I get a lot of you know things that doesn't relate to GDB anymore, And but GDB is a... Okay, so it's, this is completely detached from the licensing issue, so... Absolutely, uh, uh, okay, yeah. Or maybe during when you detach it, maybe you can change the license. So, <laughs> uh, technically, I think it's dual. I mean, it's, it's, it's just code, right? Uh, uh, the, then you have issues like, if you're still going to be using BFD, then you have the issue that BFD does not have a stable API and, not, and does not have a stable ABI, of course. If no, it doesn't have a stable API at all. Um, so if you're going to be using BFD, then you, you're going to uh, maybe, I don't know, lock in the version of BFE you're using today, and exactly. you need developing GDB yes. until at some point that you decide to update it? Yes. Uh, well, that's doable, but is it better? The question is, what, what are the problems today that we're right. debating with such a big effort? It's just complicated. It's kind of entangled right now. And it will become even more complicated. It will be more. Well, by, se by separating it? 
Just in Kafka, please. Like, wait, but I, I, I like really have to do this. So, so we'll we'll do that that. Yeah. and build it, and like, we'll synchronize it. Or but, like, I would, yeah. in my head, I would go That's to the other way. We share code, which is easy. I find it annoying that we have to copy code all the time. So, yeah. in my head, it's like, why don't we merge to read Yeah, code, exactly. I have this thought for many years that I would do a talk about merging GCC and Binutils and GDB all in the same tree again, like it was. OK, I see you're not my audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Synchronizing DBBG, um, all the build machinery that we installed the page between GCC and DBBG, uh, which gave it different repos. I'm not sure I'm looking forward to more of that. So but the issue, what, what are the issues that you find? Let me tell you one of the very, very simple but that would be the tip of the iceberg. If you want to build a bin utils release, you need to check out a particular tag or a branch of bin utils. If you want to build a GDB release, you have to, on the same repository, you have to do the same. But this is not true about object dump. This is not true about gas. This is not true about link. I mean, you check out bin utils, you get gas, object dump, everything under that umbrella release version of bin utils 2.38 or whatever. You want GDB 15.2? It's a, so these are all the symptoms that these two things do not belong to the same repository. Well, if, if they were separate, you would still have exactly the same problem. You would have to check out Pinutils, that tag, and check out GDB. But that. then you would separate these two twins that they were born together attached. So you need a better wiki page describing how to build this, right? Yeah. OK, then. <laughs> <laughs> so my question was that, how do you feel about this? And now I know how you feel about this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you compare with you know, VM, it has it, like uh, Clang and LibLVM and Clang for Mac have run up separate releases. It would be like this to be in the same repo, but True. Release, so that's kind of the situation. Like, we could have uh, synchronized Pinutil and be released. Like, that's one product. Then it would make sense to have it in the same repo. So, oh, okay. Uh, I see several issue of having GDB and Binutil. Um, the stable version doesn't match a kind of, so it can be easily uh, you can easily have GDB depending on the beta version of BFD, while something is being pushed but not really, is not finalized. So you're, depending on BFD, which is in the style, I won't say that BFD has ever been stable for to begin with, but still. Uh, I mean, you could be in the middle of like a huge, not refactoring, but something. And so GDB is depending on this even more unstable version of BFD, which can be a problem. Um, so that could be one of the reasons why it would be interesting to maybe have a way for GDB to say we are using this version of BFD. Now I understand the other way around. I mean, when you're adding uh, a new target on GDB, you will have some stuff on BFD, and so you need to be synchronized with it. So, I mean, there are downside and, 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 and advantages with that, but... Right. Uh, I, think the point, I don't recall a case where it was a problem. Like in the worst case, you can always back forward, like in our yeah. release kind of back of BAD patches. But I don't recall. Uh, okay, so that's that's I, the good I, news. I, I do recall many situations of um, like recently, like Alan changing the BFV get section something function, and he just submits a patch that changes everything, including GDB. Yeah, that could be that the, the issues. If you don't do that, if it's separate, then uh, say you're close to release and uh, you, you want to support a new feature in your backend architecture. So, oh, now I need to pull in a, a newer BFD. But then that brings along a bunch of other API changes. And now you're stuck with having to adjust everything. And there are many regressions that we did not uh, see. Because right yeah. now, if there's regression, and like, if BFD causes regression for GB, we know pretty much why. Hmm. Uh, if we upgrade it from point to release, point to release, I, I don't know if you guys follow the discussion on the LLVM side. I'll give you the mic after. OK. Uh, a few years ago, the LLVM project was moving to GitHub. And they had to decide, well, they took the opportunity to try to decide whether to use submodules or everything in the same tree. There was a huge discussion. 
there was voting involved. It was fun to watch that because it was oh, like, on the other side. <laughs> but the end result was, the end result was they, they decided to stick with one tree for everything. Because it's just simpler. Uh, where, where is the mic? Oh, it's over there. I mean, I mean, I guess having it all in one repo, uh, I, I guess he's saying having all in one repo gives you a sort of natural implication of integration um, ness. Yeah. And that this particular point in the source tree, oh, this commit broke that. And you're con sort of, in a sense, you're constantly integrating. Um, I had a topic change. Um, if I, well, this is a slight uh, change. Let me just topic. say, hmm. in addition to the sentence you just said before, the integration aspect and also the sharing, it's how many dwarf readers do we need in the tool chain? How many, whatever, yeah. libraries do we need? It, we see this in GCC has, you know, uh, let's come up with a hash table implementation. Yeah, this is, right? Yeah. It's, it's because it's not easy to share. This is we kind just of what reinvent. I wanted to move the conversation onto, which is, um, so in GCC, we're using C++ 11. In binutils, it's implemented in C, and I don't know which version of C. 99. Nine, C. 99. 99. And GDB is in C++ 17. 17, with exceptions turned on, whereas GCC is C++ 11, with exceptions turned off. And the garbage collector. And, oh yeah, and the subset that the garbage collector thing can handle and I think both projects are the subset that Intel tool can handle um, as well, the sort of implicit assumptions. And I, well, I mean, we have Libibity, the, which is like a very old body of, um, it's got like Obstack, that's the thing I've <laughs> been poking around in recently, uh, and, and things like the, these data structures, and they, it's like the, this is ancient C code, and there is, C, you know, we, we have type safe for it. The, the, like, OPSAC is full of macros. And I'm thinking, well, this school could all be C++ and be, um, you know, member functions. And we could use, if we assume C++ 11 or later, maybe there could be a sh implementation of OPSAC that is C++. And it will be at least used by those parts of the tool chain that are happy to be implemented in some version of C++. And C++ 11 is wonderful compared to C++ 98, right. which we were using. Um, yeah, so I, I just said that it's sort of a sideways shift of the conversation. Is, but it's very much in terms of code sharing. And, um, and, and it's exactly what extent it's possible, but given that you use ex rely on exception handling and we, um, it's, we have to do manual error handling. And, right. You know, the... Uh, yeah, it's... It, it, <laughs> If we decided, for example, to share some hash tables, we would shift them to some library mm -hmm. under the, the repo that would not be compiled with exceptions or mm -hmm. would not rely on exceptions and would not rely on the garbage collector, yeah. like Liberty or something like that. But if, if it's in the same repo, it's very easy to do that, just sharing that. Yeah. Uh, we stopped using mostly OBSTAC. Uh, oh, they're still probably one. Hmm? We, we still have it. Permit, but there's, still a lot there's still a lot of it. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah. I can see sharing better. Yeah. yeah. Ease of sharing. Ease of sharing. How do you guys do, because I'm more on the Vigitals and GCC side, how do you guys do releases and try to do a freeze when Vigitals is still doing something? Like Alan comes in and then changes something. Right. Oh, the, yeah, go ahead. Improvement brand. GP pretty much cares about uh, the FD and the FD. feels like we have the token, it doesn't really matter because I don't think we ship it. And so, so it's very much on the FD. And like I think you said, we just this week take a snapshot of the state of the FD at the point of where GP branches. So it's like a true uh, thing. It can happen that, that the FD is, is in the middle of a big refactor and it's broken. So you, so you branch early. Yes, then and then stabilize. Right, like, yeah, not like, right, whereas glibc, for example, freezes the main branch yeah. and then stabilizes that and then branches. Whereas we branch and then stabilize. There's never freezes in, in the master branch of the uh, Yeah, uh, 
on the topic of code sharing, uh, I as I as I remember, LDB uh, can uh, use Clang to instantiate templates and uh, uh, basically do advanced expression evaluation in the in the debugger, and uh, it would be beneficial, I think, to move GDB closer to GCC so so that GDB could do that also. Yeah, because that is a huge issue right now. I'm not sure if you're aware of that network, but then there, uh, there is like a partial implementation of the thing. So there is a way for GDB to use a call that is the name of the GCC. Lead GCC. Mm -hmm. no. no, not, not JIT. No. Anyway, it's the compiled, the feature is also compiled, so mm -hmm. uh, GDB can somehow go to the reverse. Yeah, I, I am. So I won't think it's pretty much new today. Uh, I don't know the I as I as I remember it's dead and it barely can do C. Mm, you you can't like even talk about C plus it doesn't do C++. So, so I don't have an addition. One thing I added to GCC um, is a unit test framework. Um, and, and basically, I'd started with an API that looked a lot like the Google, t Google test framework. And it's diverged somewhat because um, uh, I can talk about the differences, but if anyone cares. But um, do you have? unit tests in GDB or in um, bin utils and what framework are you using, if any? Well, we have something very similar to what you have. We run the unit tests. I don't need that. I have it this one. Got that. Okay. Um, the unit tests are written alongside the source code. Mm -hmm. And if you compile GDB in, re in development mode, not a release, release branch, uh, there's if that's around that code, it will be included, mm -hmm. and then you can run a command inside GDB, like a start GDB, and run main self check. It goes over all the registered unit tests and runs them. So inside GDB, it's not decoupled, not a separate compilation process. It's in, within GDB. Yeah, in, inside GCC's self test, you run GCC. I think something dash f unit test. Um, but yeah, well. well what, what you actually do is you type make self-test, and it, I can't even remember what the flag's called anymore. I, okay. I, I might be misremembered yet. But, right, so, so, no. so it's a similar process in the sense that your unit tests are baked within the GCC process. In a deep build one, of the I compiler, guess. and it's all optimized away by the pre -pro mm. goes away by the preprocessor if you're doing a release build. Um, yeah. I, and we, that's something we could consider sharing, like the, the core code, the yeah. registration of the functions. Yeah, the, the registration might be different because um, there was a lot of pushback when I was doing for the GCC unit tests on automatic registration of tests. I had, um, I was doing what Google test has and basically with macro magic and global objects with constructors, basically the four main is called sort of registering themselves and you know, okay. all the objects sort of register as, as like, here are all the tests that I know about that are linked into this binary. And that was regarded by other GCC maintainers as too much magic. Okay, um, so which, we have a different kind so of magic. So you have to invoke them manually. We have magic as well, but it's different. <laughs> so in our, in our build process, we, have, we run the script that goes over all the source files, finds functions called underscore, initialize foo, collects all those function names, generates a source file that calls all those functions. Oh, nice. So in, you just have to, in your unit file, in your C file. Nicer than mine. <laughs> define, <laughs> if you want to register a unit test, you, you just have a function called initialize whatever module and call register unit test. Yeah. And it yeah. magically. The, the one in GCC, there's absolutely no magic. You add a new test you have to add somewhere the call to invoke the test, and it's just very explicit. Your code should be boring. There should True. be no magic. Yeah. It's easy to read. Find so what, yeah, if how, you forget, how do you handle 
registering a unit test that might depend on the configuration, like it's a, a unit test for the AR64 backend. It's not included in all compilations. There is a tar the lang hook for cool uh, target specific, uh, so not a target hook for cool target specific uh, okay. unit tests. And there's also a lang hook for calling front end specific unit tests. Right. Um, and it's as, and it's all, it's implemented how you might expect in a, in a very explicit, yeah. kind of not smart way, right. with no magic. Just this, this part, of course, it doesn't, these things don't seem to be developed make them, so mm -hmm. once you're pressing, you need to change them. Yeah. yeah. You've done one. Mm. Unlike things like, it's helping. You could have dwarf, oh, yeah. dwarf readers, like you said, I don't do it. Technical dwarf readers, like dwarf changes all the time, or bugs, bugs of fixing dwarf readers, so that is the era where I, I have, an, I have another topic. Um, my GDP team came to me to bring up as a topic for either glibc or here. We, on IBM, we are, our long double type was, has been for a long time called this IBM double double. It's a 128 bit type. We're moving away since Power 9, we actually added IEEE 128 instructions. So we want to move everybody over to IEEE 128. Currently, when if you're on one of the older systems and you type break printf because you want to look at one of your types, it breaks. You can print out your long double type. It's out there. If we're on one of our other systems, like Fedora 36 or later, where we've switched the default long double type to IEEE, GLBC is doing some macro swaps, and you set a breakpoint on printf, and it's the actual IBM double double printf, because the name changed under the covers from GLBC to something else, which is kind of, from a user standpoint, confusing. You expected, you know, there's printf in my code, I compiled it, and now it's printf underscore IEEE 128 or whatever they GLBC named it. Um, I was talking with Uli and, and Carl, who's kind of do, does our, our, GLBC, our GDB stuff. They seem to be under the impression that at least if we tried to fix this on the GDB side, that this would be difficult because it's not just printf, it's all the... Uh, 200 or so math library routines, ATNL, COSEL, you know, on top of that. So they were, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm trying to understand for like when I go to the GD, GLibC boff, what, how GDB would fix it if it did fix it versus whether we have GLibC try to do something and kind of trying to find out what the easiest solution is and who should be doing this. So is it, is it that GDB picks up the wrong printf implementation or it's just a name that's confusing? Well, because I believe the, the ATNL, COSEL, those, those names map to the IBM double-double routine. And when we compile for IEEE 128 long double glibc and libmath and libm and, and glibc, Seems like it's well. Uh... We well, in GCC, we know what option the user used, and that you're defaulting to either IBM double double or things. So if you call A10L, and you're on a IBM double double system, we will call A10L. But if we're on a, and we didn't want to change that name in the libraries, but if you're IEEE 128, then we call like A10L underscore IEEE 128. So you go to the right routine to do the long double math routine or the different printf on that. The problem is, as a user on GDB, I'm just looking at my code. There's A10L, there's printf. I'm going to set my breakpoints on those. And we do them, but they are the old IBM double double systems, not. But I want them to change. So basically, I, GDB almost does it. I don't know if maybe can't know which one we're doing so, so it's almost like it has to put a breakpoint on both routines. It and does do that. So, uh, I, are there new ifunk functions involved in this? Are there what? ifunk? No. It, not necessarily, no. So GCC generates a call to the, the new 
symbol and that's it. Exactly, the new symbol. And the new symbol has changed from before. No. So you have a, you have a, so far with printf, if I play it with the old flags, it will be like called the symbol printf. Yeah, glibc, glibc, because, yeah, because I think it's it's a header redirect from glibc that's changing the name oh. from printf or a10l to the new symbol that needs to go. And as a user of right. GDB, and you're looking at, you know, debugging your code, and you, List your source file. Sounds and like it's an A10L. Okay, I'll put a breakpoint there because I want to stop while I'm executing, and that'll stop if you're on an IBM Double Double, but it will go right on by on an IEEE 128 system. So I would, it's, yeah, I, I don't know what to say much. That I have some ideas. Uh, I assume that it's not that GLBC is not doing a, a preprocessor redirection like IFF. It's probably an El Elias issue, like the the yeah, symbol sure. printf is Elias to the right. Implementation and then GDB, you do break printf and then somehow resolves that alias to the actual symbol, which has the longer name and prefers that one. Well, but it's not doing that I today. If, if the, I mean, hmm? I mean, I guess I'm trying to figure out what's the best solution for if I'm right. on one of these new systems and I type break printf or whatever the source so, level yeah. routine was called, but the underlying actual symbol that GCC used is different, I, right. I don't know whether it's the header coming in or, or what. Um, we, need to, we need to be able to, right. I don't know. The, the issue from GDB's perspective is GDB is doing what you want. You user says, I want to break in ADNL. Yeah. GDB find a sensible with that name, and that's why you break break breakpoints. So kind of having a breakpoint with some other symbol would be. So, but that really depends on how the GDBs actually implement all that magic and stuff in your job. No. I, I have a theory that uh, the issue is completely different. It's a matter of uh, presentation in GDB. The issue is when you do break foo, if GDB, GDB resolves that foo, that string, to some symbol, and then when you do info breakpoints, the only thing that you see is the resolve name. Foo, parentheses, bunch of arguments, and the return type before. And sometimes, it, if it's an Elias case, it resolves to a different symbol. And when you do info breakpoints, say it's an Elias and resolves to bar. You have 100 breakpoints. You do info breakpoints, and there's no, no breakpoint with any string called foo. You don't know which breakpoint it is. Uh, so my... Uh, idea is that this might be a presentation issue that the user did break printf, we should have a column, uh, this is breakpoint one was created with the expression printf, and then a separate column saying it resolved to this address, to this uh, function. So you'd have both things, the thing you typed, always kept, yeah. and then the but, thing but it But the thing is that the, in this case, In this case, I, I think the old name still exists as a function because like glibc, sim at least on power, simultaneously supports both IEEE 128 and IBM double double together. So you can take a binary on a IBM double double system compiled against long double, run it, it runs, move it to a system that's now IEEE 128 by default for GCC, run it, it still runs, and it still right. calls the IBM double-double symbols in the libraries. Because the call is calling the resolved symbol, the one that yeah. has uh, I But how am I, as a user, if I'm going to set a breakpoint, know that this is a symbol that's been redirected on me, and I can't call A10L, I need to call the, the other name, because that doesn't show up in the source code. Because uh, Uli, Uli, I think what Uli was trying to say, or from what I remember, is he thought that they would almost have to have some type of table in GDB to say, oh, you want to do printf. I'll put a breakpoint on printf, but I also need to put a breakpoint over here in case you go down that path because you happen to be on... But we, on, we do do that. We, when you do break foo, GDB will place a, a, a breakpoint location 
at every instance of different foos in your whole program. Uh, so if you have 10 functions called printf in your but whole program. It's not called printf, up, it's called printf underscore blah. They've actually changed the name. I mean, but how, how is that mapping implemented? That, that's a key thing here. Yeah, I don't know. My understanding is when he says that the symbol, the printf symbol is only mapped to the old thing. And when code gets rated for the new technology, the symbol is never called printf, it's just directly called printf, the new, new thing. Yeah. So I yeah. Is it? it or? From the it's never called printf to the new device. Like, fr from what he describes, my understanding is the easiest way to implement that is you to bound define printf, printf underscore, I could be something. Yeah. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how. But well, I, like, I understood GMC's that. doing it. I understood that the symbol printf is resolved to either of implementations depending on compiler flags. Well, well I believe in the library, both routines exist under oh. both names and GCC, when, I, when we see A10L for the long double, you know, arc tangent function, we will say, if you're on IBM double double, I will call A10L okay. for you. So it does not but call a symbol called printf. If I triple E 128, I will call this other symbol. All right. And Okay, so GCC, when emitting code, yes. will call the resolve function directly. Correct. But in glibc, there is an elf symbol called printf somewhere. Yeah. Would always alias us to the old thing. Maybe something like that. Yeah. We, need, we would need to know more details about this, okay. I think. But I, I like that idea of making info breakpoints always show. Yeah. Do we want us to answer the switch? Yeah. And then we'd like to kill off of it. It's not a transform. So, no. It's just a different, different So we're out of time? You know, officially? I think we're out of time officially. So officially it's over, but if you still want to continue chatting, it's fine. <laughs>